Steve Dotto here. How are you today? I am doing great. Today on Growing Your YouTube Network to 100,000 subscribers, I want to talk to you about the most important asset we have, our subscribers, our audience, and how we can engage with them. And YouTube is giving us so many different tools to allow us to engage with our audience. And uh, I'm still figuring them all out as I go along. And, and I imagine it's going to be an ongoing journey that, uh, you know, they're constantly adding new opportunities for engagement. And uh, I think it's terrific. You know, the joy of being a content publisher on YouTube versus a network TV dude is when I was doing network television, I never had the opportunity to engage with my audience. I very seldom could hear from them what they wanted to hear, what they liked, what they didn't like about my product. We were in the dark as far as that goes. We had lots of conversations with sponsors, with people who were giving us money, telling us what they liked and didn't like. But the actual audience, not so much, unless it was iterative, unless I was sitting on an airplane and talking to somebody that happened to see the show or somebody would come up to me, or my, or my friends, of course, would always comment. But, but really, very little real engagement with our audience. The magic of... YouTube is the community, the fact that people can post, ask comments, provide questions, uh, provide ideas, provide criticism, engage with me as, a, as the content provider is, well, it's pure gold. I mean, what more could you ask? Can you imagine having your customers, if you're in, if you're in the, the shoe business, having your customers come in before you order inventory, say, I would like to buy brown shoes with this big a heel in the, with this buckle. I'd like to buy those shoes. Those shoes I would buy three pairs of if you had them in stock. Oh, I'll have them in stock next week. And then they come in and tell you and buy them. That's the opportunity we have when people start to talk to us and tell us what they're interested in, what they're not interested in. So I love the opportunity for community. Uh, and I think if you're going to be a YouTube publisher, you have to take the attitude that your community is somebody who you have a dialogue with, not somebody who you deliver product to. I think that's, that's essential. In, in, in growing a healthy, vibrant, long-lasting YouTube community. And YouTube gives us a lot of tools for that. Maybe they're not perfect, uh, and they, they fall under criticism uh, in, in some areas, uh, but they are tools that we can use. And, of course, I, the most controversial is the fact that in the comments area, YouTube has decided uh, that you have to log in with your Google Plus profile and post under your Google Plus profile, which creates which creates uh, a level of responsibility so that people in the past in YouTube, especially not so much in channels like ours, uh, but in other channels, you'd get a lot of trolls, a lot of people swearing, a lot of people just kind of going in anonymously and abusing the situation, just doing, doing online graffiti and that sort of stuff. Very little of that. In fact, I've got 22,000, closing around 23,000 subscribers. Uh, I've been engaged in literally hundreds of conversations and I've had to ban one user from the channel at this point for being abusive. That's it. One. I'm kind of disappointed. <laughs> I would have thought there would be more, but there's only one that I've actually banned, and that was his use of language. I think it was it was the th it was the reason that I banned him. And it's not that I mind the odd swear word, but it was just it was over the top. At any rate, so let's look at some of the places that we can engage with community. Now, the first place that you can engage with community, the first opportunity to engage with your community comes when you first publish a post. Now, Apple or, or sorry, Apple. YouTube used to allow us to create uh, kind of a newsletter type format that we would send out, a, a post that we, we, we could uh, send across our channel to all of our subscribers. Uh, they don't allow that anymore. All that they allow us to do, the only time they allow us to connect with our whole channel uh, kind of in a mass form is when we initially publish a video, is that first publishing process. So you want to stop and think about it and make sure that all of your ducks are in a row before you make that first publish. And I'll show you. This is a, this is a video which I am planning on publishing in the next couple of days. And let's just go into it and have a quick boo, and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. So this is just going to be one of my uh, tutorials. And it has not yet been made public. I've uploaded it and I've started doing all of my massaging of the information. I've you know been putting in my annotations. I've obviously created the cover art for it, done those things, and I'm ready to send it out now. Or, or I, I, I'm going to show you what I'll do when I am ready to send it out. Is We're going to convert it from unlisted, which is how I upload all of my videos, so that I can get feedback from people and stuff like that. So I can share the URL easily, but it's not been shared with the entire network and it also now when it's going up on listed like this allows me to share the url with our patreon network 
of people who get access to the video before it's uploaded to YouTube because I don't turn on monetization now until I actually upload it so people get to view all of the content free in advance of the public as a part of their Patreon support, as a perk for their Patreon support. So it's, it's living and unlisted until it's ready to go to prime time. Once I click public, then I'm given this little dialog box. And the only time it's going to appear is the first time you publish, is when you go from unlisted and private or when you first upload it, if you upload it to public right away. And here's where we can add a message which is sent out across the channel to everybody at the same time. So think very carefully about this because this is a chance to promote the video that you're gonna be sending out. So this message is your only chance to, to reach out to your entire network at once with this video. And they allow us here at the same time to cross post this into our other social networks, into Google+, which is built in YouTube, also to Facebook and Twitter. And we can also at this point add this to the playlist, but we can go in and do that at any time. But this little dialogue, this piece of text here, this is the only chance that we have to deliver it in this form. So pay very close attention to that. Now, while I'm on this, if you don't have the linkages to set up for your, for your Twitter or your Facebook account, uh, you can set them up right from here or you can go in through menus to do it. But for instance, I don't like to publish onto Facebook right away from YouTube. I will publish ultimately on Facebook, but what I will do is I will actually create a page post in my blog first, and then I will post that onto Facebook rather than posting this. Although if you do post straight from uh, YouTube to Facebook, there's some really nice little additional features. It looks very cool, but I still prefer to do it from my blog post. And I've explained the reasons for that in previous videos, but essentially it comes down to, I want people viewing, as many people viewing the video on my site as I can, as opposed to on the, on the straight YouTube site. Having said that, if I was now to just click on this Facebook icon, up will come the permission form, which will allow me to start logging in and start creating the, uh, the link between Facebook and YouTube so that I can actually publish straight from this interface to Facebook. And I don't want to do that right now. And in fact, I'm going to cancel this and step back. Uh, cancel. There we go. And I'm going to leave this page. There we go. So I did, I, because I'm not ready to publish it. I didn't want to accidentally, while I'm yammering away to you, accidentally publish the, the video and then lose my opportunity to share it properly and all that kind of stuff. That would have been a mess, wouldn't it? If you want to set this up yourself, or if you want to go in and manage those connected accounts, YouTube, uh, uh, Twitter, and Facebook, you do that by going into your YouTube settings, and there you will find connected accounts. And in connected accounts, you can connect your accounts and you can also edit which account they're connected to, disable them, and you can choose what activities you can do with those connected accounts. So that gives you that flexibility right there. And so that is kind of step one of dealing with your, is dealing with, um, your audience in YouTube. Now, once your video is up and you're kind of into your normal rhythm of the day, uh, there will be comments being posted. So here are my comments being posted. Uh, and I get a reasonable number of comments each and every day. And as I say, this to me represents nothing but opportunity. So at least twice a day, I take uh, however long it takes. I take 15 minutes, I take 45 minutes, however long it takes. I read through every post and I respond to as many of them as I can. Now, part of that's because I'm a great guy Part of that's because I want to be seen as a great guy engaging in my audience. And part of that is because my audience is great and they're telling me all the information that I need. So that uh, giving me good ideas for moving forward. And there's also the social proof. The fact that there's lots of engagement, there's lots of churn, there's lots of dialogue happening on my channel makes my channel seem more alive. It's a happening place. There's interesting things happening. And I... I benefit from that and I can also create that environment happening more consistently by engaging in the conversations. So I go through and what I do is I start out, I just, what I typically do is I just click on the community button here and that will then bring me into all of the published comments that are recent. So you can see since last night I've had one, two, three, four comments. Oh, look here, here's one and it looks like it's Dutch. I, I actually respond to my multilingual comments as well. Here, here's what I do is I highlight it because I can't tell what they're saying there. They might be saying something nice. They might be saying something crummy. I highlight it and then I use Google Translate. You want to do it? Let's do it. Let's just take a look. <laughs> Here it is. A little sidebar tip. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to go into Google Translate. 
Translate, there it is. I call up Google Translate, and that'll give me a kind of a du dual dialog box here. So I just, I paste it in. As soon as you paste it in, it, it, it really, oh, it's saying it's Afrikaner. I know this, but awesome. Thanks from the Netherlands. So here's what I do is I go into English and I say, <laughs> I say, so here I'm going from English to Afrikaans. Thanks. They said from the Netherlands. Comments. Okay. So I've said, have a great day from... Now it says Afrikaans. So now I realize that's based off largely on Dutch, but I wonder if I just choose Dutch instead. Let's just take a look and see what the uh, see what the difference is. I think I'm going to send it back in Dutch, just because they said from the Netherlands. And let me capitalize Vancouver. Okay, so there it is. And now. Multilingual Steve goes into action and oh, oh all that effort and I can't reply because they don't have the ability for me to reply here. Ah so frustrating. But you get the idea. You get the idea. Here I mean here is a prime example of Google Plus integration with YouTube and me being frustrated and lost occasionally. And I still get lost in Google Plus. Do you? Yeah, you do, don't you? So here's what here's what happens. Why does two things? While I'm on the, I'm gonna go on a rant. This I believe comes down to people's permissions, and they've set up some sort of switch in their permissions that doesn't allow replies back when they post. So they've got some privacy setting, and I get that. So all I can do is a thumbs up when people do that to me. But here is something which drives me even as much or more crazy. And I, sorry, Will, I'm gonna be using you. Thank you, very useful. Okay, well, so I go plus because I try and include the person's Google Plus address so that it cross posts to their page and we get that extra social, that we get that extra social connection. So when I type in plus Will, quite often his name will come up right away at the top, but it doesn't. Look at that. There's no Will Kinish. Kinish. Kintish. Kintish. Nil Will Kintish. Why isn't Google Plus or YouTube or whoever's doing this chat looking at the one that I'm replying to and pre-populating its name? Ala, like I think Facebook kind of does that, the way that things normally would work. It's not coming up. And so sometimes if you have a common name, now I will be able to get to Will Kintish here. There it is. So there it is. So I'm able to add him here. But sometimes if it's a common name, it won't even appear here. <laughs> I don't get it. If you get it, if you understand it, write me and let me know what I'm doing wrong, if I'm doing something wrong. And if you happen to work at Google Plus or YouTube, fix it. Please. Okay. Where was I? Back to talking about dealing with community. So anyways, I go through and I comment on everybody's comments within the community. But every once in a while, so I do that several times a day, every once in a while, it's a great idea to click on your insights here, which will bring you into a, <clears throat> a summary of who is engaging with you the most and what that audience engagement looks like. So what it does is it pulls your top commenters. So out of the 22,000 or so uh, people that follow the our, our site, uh, our, follow my channel, I realize that there's somewhere over 1,000 that are probably really active because all the videos that I post reach 1,000 views quite quickly and then some of them will stay in that 1,000 range and then some of them will continue to go if they've got a lot of public appeal. But they all hit that 1,000 fairly quickly. So I recognize the fact that there's probably about 1,000 people that are really engaged. And those are what I would call top YouTube fans and YouTube calls them that as well. So what they do is they give you a list of the people who are most engaged and they offer, they suggest if you want to bring these folks into a Google Plus circle that are called top YouTube fans. And so I've done this twice. Each time there's about 300 people and I've done it about a month apart each time. And here we've got about 378 new suggestions 
And so if I want to add these people, I just go into the view all and then I can add them all. I'll, I'll, I'll do that. I'll let, it, I'll let it bring them all up and then I can select them all and I can add them to my top YouTube fans. And I think I did that wrong. Let me cancel that uh, because I think I clicked on the wrong thing here. Uh, is it view all here? Oh, the, the, I have to click on the, that's the 500, 658 people are in my top fan circle. Here's my new suggestions for my circle, which I have to click view. That was the problem. I click that and here's all the new people that I can add to my circle just by clicking on this. And I'll take a quick look through this and I will do that a little bit later. So now I'll have 900 people. And then once you've done that, let's go back. Then remember how I was talking about how we engage with fans just when we post a video? This using the circles allows us to start to engage and create dialogue with fans that are most engaged with us using Google Plus. So here we can post, we can start conversations here with our top fans within Google Plus. So it's it's worth keeping adding these people to your top fan circle. And you can even upload videos privately to them and you can create a hangout with them so you can reward your top fans. These are things which I am just about to start doing. I haven't started conversation and I'm trying to figure out what the what the uh, what the timber, what the what the type of content, what the type of things that I want to engage in conversation because I don't want to abuse the privilege. I don't want to abuse the right and the contact that I have with these fans. So that's it. I think we're going to call it right now. Uh, we've had a good chat about dealing with your community and understanding some of the things that we can do growing our YouTube channel to honor the fans that we have to keep them engaged. Because at the end of the day, I call this channel, I call this, this series growing your YouTube channel to 100,000 subscribers. But the real goal is to create an engaged community. 100,000 subscribers who don't watch my videos and don't comment and don't do anything with me do no good to any of us. 100,000 subscribers who are engaged, who are watching, who ask questions, who add comments. That is a valuable community and that's what we're trying to build. So not only do we have to create great compelling content, but we have to reach out and start to engage with that community ourselves. So that is my message for today. I hope you found this useful. How do you like the green screen option? It's kind of different. I'm kind of getting it. I got this big ass block underneath me that I'm putting here because other than if I don't, I'm using the green screen and my head floats free and it looks absolutely redonkulous. So I don't want to do that. I'm not sure I like having this block underneath me, but I'm just kind of playing with the options. Hey, it's, it's better than the first time I tried the green screen when the animals attacked and we had that big disaster. Uh, if you have any comments, please, go into the YouTube comments area and comment and you know I will be reading and you know I will be responding. So if you have suggestions, if you have comments, if you have criticisms, if you want to share ideas, do so down below there. And while you're looking just underneath me, you might want to consider uh, clicking on the Patreon link and taking a look and seeing if you want to be one of our sponsors in Patreon. There are some perks attached and we certainly do appreciate it. We are try I'm trying to get to the point where I can remove all advertising and also add some extra features and functions to the show. And uh, we're probably not going to be all that far away from uh, having some good success in that space. I so would love for you to join us. I thank you very much for spending time with me today. Regardless of whether you're a Patreon supporter or not, I appreciate you being here today, spending this time with me, learning with me, and sharing your ideas with me. I'm Steve Dotto. Have fun storming the castle. <laughs>